Hey guys, Tyler here. In my last video about the Klingons, I discussed how their biology has been influenced by their environment and how their evolution compares to that of life on Earth. I wanted to do a follow-up discussing an aspect of their history that's remained quite elusive for years. How exactly do they acquire warp drive? It seems like such a simple question whose answer ought to be obvious. We know how several other species achieved faster-than-light travel. For humans, it was invented by Zephram Cochran in the wake of Earth's World War III. For the Ferengi, they purchased it from the brain. But for Klingons, we don't exactly know. We do know that the Klingon Empire was founded in the 9th century AD by Kalos the Unforgettable, who united his people and overthrew the strongman dictator Molor. And we find out in the Next Generation episode, Rightful Heir, that a monastery was built on Boreth to honor Kalos not too long after his death. But it's never explicitly stated if the Klingons got there with warp drive, or sublight vessels. They clearly possessed some form of interstellar travel before the Crusades began on Earth, but if they had warp drive since the late first millennium AD, wouldn't their empire be much bigger than it actually is? In this video, I attempt to answer these and other questions and explore other aspects of Klingon spaceflight. Let's get started. Before we can speculate on the origins of Klingon warp drive, let's first establish some background. Towards the end of his rule, before departing, according to legend, for Stovokor, the afterlife for honorable Klingons, Kalos left a message. He pointed to a star in the night sky and told his people to look for him there. The star? None other than the son of Boreth, where the Klingons would build a monastery to await his return. The dating of the monastery's establishment about 15 centuries before 2369 is consistent with the aging of the Sword of Kalos in DS9 at around the same amount of time. But another transformative event just half a millennium later, in the 14th century, introduces some complications into the story of Klingon spaceflight. Just 500 years after the founding of the Klingon Empire, another alien civilization invaded and plundered Kronos. They stole several valuable artifacts, including the Sword of Kalos, which wouldn't be recovered for another thousand years. The Klingons assigned the name Herk, meaning outsider, to the aliens, who uh, are said to have originated from the Gamma Quadrant, possibly having traveled through the Bajoran wormhole, and may have been insectoids. Believed to be extinct by the 24th century, the Herc nonetheless left a very profound impact on Klingon society that resonates to this day. It instilled an inherent distrust of outsiders an understandable one to be sure, that shaped the Klingons' foreign policy decisions, including imperial expansion. By the 22nd century, the Klingon Empire had become one of the dominant powers in local space, and remained that way into the 23rd and 24th century and beyond. During their interstellar age, some notable first contacts include the Vulcans in 2016 and humans in 2151. By the time of the original series, we see the Klingon Empire form a temporary alliance with the Romulans, during which several technologies, including cloaking devices and starships, are exchanged. By the 24th century, however, the Romulans are back to attacking Klingon outposts, and this time it's the Klingons in the Federation that are allies. Then, all three are more or less on the same page during the Dominion War, which threatens the entirety of local space. See? Geopolitics, I mean, interstellar politics can be complicated. But in all of this, the question still remains, when exactly did the Klingons achieve faster than light travel? In order to forge and maintain a true interstellar empire, it would be difficult if it took years or even decades just to reach the nearest star system. The Klingons could have had warp drive in the 9th century, or they could have developed it sometime between the mid 20th and early 21st centuries, when the Klingons had their first encounter with the Vulcans. Indeed, a hotly debated quote from Quark 
Quark in the DS9 episode Little Green Men points to the possibility that neither species possessed true warp drive until after the year 1947 when that episode partly takes place. Of course, this talking point is often dismissed as the mistaken ramblings of a profit-driven Ferengi hellbent on establishing galactic superiority. Quark likely knows his own planet's history, but not necessarily a lot of other planets' histories. Or perhaps he meant the Warp 9 engine, which none of the aforementioned species possessed at this time. All in all, it's frankly best to chalk this up to what it really is. The writers just made a continuity error. Regardless, this brings me to another oft-sided explanation for the origins of Klingon warp drive. It's one that, from where I'm standing, or, or sitting in this case, is not universally accepted, but not universally rejected either. According to various non-canon sources, the Klingons may have reverse-engineered warp drive and other technologies from the Herc after driving them off-world. This would be equivalent to a society slightly more advanced than ours being invaded by another civilization few centuries ahead of us. We'd quickly be overrun, but after resisting and overcoming the oppression of an overconfident subjugator race, we'd reap the benefits of what they left behind. It's kind of like Independence Day research. This isn't particularly my favorite theory when it comes to how the Klingons achieved warp drive, as I think it kind of robs them of agency to have developed it on their own without outside intervention. But it would explain how they could maintain an expansionist empire starting by at least the 21st century. Even if their initial expansion were gradual, if their interstellar empire were truly ancient, then it very well could have overrun much of the quadrant by the time Starfleet was making its first forays into space, although the Vulcans and Andorians likely would have served as a sort of buffer. But if the Klingons spent a few centuries tinkering with Herc technology, only perfecting warp drive by the late 20th or early 21st centuries, then the timeline of their expansion would make more sense. Of course, it's also possible that the Klingons did possess warp drive by the year 930 AD, a date pulled from the non-canon reference book Star Trek Star Charts, and lost it after the Herc invaded, only to invent it again decades or centuries later. Anything is possible. Not only is history non-linear, meaning that certain events tend to repeat themselves, or at the very least, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme. But technological progress is not always linear either. Some technologies are invented and subsequently forgotten, only to be reinvented later on. Case in point, the Saturn V rocket was, for years, the only successful man-made vehicle that allowed us to go to the moon. But after its last launch in 1973, the rocket's components and the infrastructure to manufacture them no longer existed. We still had the schematics, but since we chose to focus more funding towards the space shuttle, which obviously had a much smaller maximum payload, those plans became more useless as time went on. In order to make it back to the moon, we've basically had to reinvent a capable rocket from scratch. Want some older examples? Okay, here's a few. How about ancient Roman concrete? Roman buildings have withstood millennia of weathering since they used burnt lime, rocks, and water to make their own concrete. But because this technology was kept a secret, it was lost during the Dark Ages that plagued Europe after Rome fell. This is why medieval architecture is more commonly associated with stone. They literally lost the techniques used to produce concrete back in antiquity. While some substitutes did exist during the Middle Ages, high-quality concrete only re-emerged after cement was first synthesized in the mid-18th century. Or what about the Baghdad battery, a working battery that was manufactured over 2,000 years ago? The Baghdad battery consisted of a cluster of cylinders that could generate one volt of electricity per cylinder. It may have been used to perform electroplating to produce metal coatings, or possibly as some kind of shock therapy. Ouch. The point is, the story of a civilization's relationship with interstellar travel, or just technology in general, can be rather complex. It's often not just a matter of, here's when they achieved warp drive and then they go on to uh, expand indefinitely. Empires rise and fall. 
Hell, even in canon, there's a distinction made between the First Empire, the Second Empire, the First and Second Dynasties, and so on. I could get into the complexities of Klingon political history if I wanted to, but that's uh, a subject that's probably best saved for another time. Indeed, it's quite remarkable, in my opinion, that Kalos was able to unite the Klingon homeworld over a millennium before the modern day. What level of technology did they have at the time? Obviously, they had a uh, space flight that was more advanced than ours since they were able to reach another star system within a reasonable time frame. The conditions that allowed Molor to exercise dictatorial authority over his entire planet's population may have been some of the same ones that carried characterize globalization on our world, such as industrialization and information technology, all over a thousand years earlier. Klingon history really is deep. So when did the Klingons achieve warp drive? Well, it's it's unclear. They could have had it as early as the 9th century AD, or they could have stolen it from the Herc where they could have developed it independently uh, between 1947 and 2016. No one knows for sure, at least not right now. However, the theory that the Herc invasion had some impact on the Klingons making the societal jump from neo-feudalism to forging an interstellar empire seems to be a popular one, as it has been endorsed by a number of novels and games. So it may be closer to the truth until it's otherwise stated in canon. Indeed, as I discussed in my video about the origin of the Romulan species, the Vulcans had at least sublight capability as far back as the 9th century BC, when they established a monastery on Pajem. It took them allegedly, until the 19th century AD to achieve true warp drive, according to claims from Ambassador Saval. Are some of these dates kind of fuzzy? Well, sure, but the point is, all of these species, the Klingons, the Romulans, the Vulcans, etc., all have warp drive now, and they've been using it for quite a while to make their presence known on the interstellar stage. Where all of this ultimately leads is, well, an ongoing development as galactic society shifts in response to various threats. But in the meantime, these species' forays into the unknown has made for some fascinating dramatic television. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below and don't forget to share it. That stuff really helps me out. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do that as well so you won't miss future uploads and click the bell icon to receive all notifications. If you want to support my work even further, becoming a patron or a member is a great way to do so. Links to those, as well as my social media and merch store, are in the description. That's all I have for this week. Kapla! And don't forget to be awesome. I'll see you next time.